Alrighty boys and girls, this is day two of welding. Last night Mike welded the beams together. So today we've got to weld them to the columns and put in the two inch square tubes to kind of support that. And just like last time, we used this Evolution chop saw to cut all the metal for the house. We can't recommend this thing enough. It has made our lives so much easier. It's a little pricey, but definitely worth it. I'll leave a link in the description below. What you thinking? Um, we'll just have the four feet from the center back here, and then the other end ends up being about six feet to the center. Okay. And what's the square for? I'll throw a string off that end, so these other two ends are square to it. Nice. Because these are not necessarily in a perfect line. Okay. So that the beams should be, if anything is. Okay. Very smart. You are a smart man. Mike Iver, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We are building an arched cabin. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. When we were looking at options for homes to put on our property, we wanted to do a house kit because it was going to be a lot less expensive to put up a house kit than it would be to do a traditional build. We also wanted to look at materials because we live in the middle of a forest and there tends to be a lot of wildfires every summer in Colorado. So we were leaning towards either concrete or steel. We found the arch cabin on our search and that was the winner. It was the most economical and being a steel house kit, it was going to hold up a little bit better. Mike starts off by grinding off all the primer and cleaning up that metal so he can get a good tack when he is tacking the beams to the piers. The welder that we are using is a Hobart Handler 210 MVP. That can run on both 220 and 110. We are using an 030 flux core wire. We chose to go with flux core because A, it's very windy on the build site, and B, it's not so much fun to drag a bunch of tanks around on uneven ground in a pit. As you can see, we had to replace these gloves sooner rather than later because Mike burned a hole right through them. We purchased a more robust pair this time around as well as a heat shield to help protect that part of the hand that gets heated up. So going back to the arched cabin, Mike has said it best when he calls it an Ikea house. <laughs> Basically, you order your house kit and they send you all of the parts needed to put everything together. Just the outside though. Throughout this process, Mike had to do a lot to wrestle the beams into place. He did everything from using a clamp to kind of rest his shoulder on to hold the beam in place to leaning on it with his foot. As much as we'd like our materials to be perfectly flat and straight, they never are. So you always have to do a little manipulation to get them where you need them. So our goal for these couple of days was to get all the beams and the supports welded onto the piers. But because of we are going into the winter season, 
we ran out of light, so we focused this day on just getting the beams attached to the piers. Not only is it getting dark out earlier, it's also getting a lot colder. So at the same time, I'm trying to grind and paint the rest of the house kit with the primer before it gets too cold to do that. So you'll see a little bit of overlap. So the house kit came with a very, very basic set of plans. In our county, we needed a lot more on our plans in order to get a permit for the building. So we had to hire an architect to flesh those plans out. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. The one thing I would change is I would have a basement put in instead of the post and pier foundation. By the time we realized that we wanted to switch, it was going to be too expensive and we really couldn't afford to do it. So we have the post and pier foundation. What we were shipped were the beams to put on top of the post and pier foundation. The ribs and the ridge line kind of structure to put together the outside of the shell, the roofing panels, a fireplace thimble. We purchased the upgraded insulation, and I believe that's it. There were some foam pieces, which I think are part of the insulation, um, but I can't remember how they all go together. So we basically got the bare bones basic to make the shell of the house. We provide the OSB for the end caps and we finish the inside as we wish and the outside as well. Mike worked really hard to get the top of this thing level so that we'll have a nice level floor inside. He welded in some really bizarre positions. I personally tend to have contrast issues while welding, especially in lower light situations. So I have no idea how he could even see what he was doing. So Mike welded until the sun set completely behind the mountains and it was full dark. I couldn't really see exactly what I had going on on that last one because... And the next day we are back at it again, this time with those supports. I did mention that we replaced these gloves, right? Because Mike kept getting weld berries in his fingers. It was not okay. Those are the ribs of the house kit that I keep talking about. I was painting them on this day. So back to the why we went with this house kit in particular and how it's gonna save us some money. I know that we are just starting to put this thing together, but I can already tell you that we've saved a significant amount of money.
Mike's mom is building a stick build house next door. And I can tell you that the labor has been about double the cost of the materials already. So we're saving a significant amount of money by doing it ourselves. If this is at all an option for you, I'd highly consider it. Mike is a legitimate badass. He is digging metal out of his fingers with a knife. Badass, guys. I promise we replaced those gloves after this day's welding. We also got that little heat shield thing for him as well. Did you guys know that I make soap? You can buy some on our website, www.lazyaholeranch.com. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Have a great rest of your week and get out there and do the thing. I know you can. Mike got all the rest of the welding done on the beams and their supports while I fabricated all the brackets. The brackets will go on top of the beams and that's what we will use to attach the floor joist to the beams. And that kind of wraps up this video.